That's very kind of you. Sophie, okay, if you're recording? I can't hear, have we lost? Yeah. Ooh, yes, yes. Okay, good. So, Aloysia, take it from the top, please. <laughs> So once again, so I'm a French teacher, but I'm very interested in uh, planet learning, online teaching. And unfortunately, I couldn't join the conference online because I had a lot of troubles with my university paying the fees. So but I hope I can come to Iceland next year. At the moment, I am planning a huge event, a virtual exchange project with some French universities. So I'm very interested in the workshops today, hoping to learn and to apply something in your future. Thanks, Aloysia. Maria, you want to go next? Uh, hi, um, my name is Maria Bortoluzzi and I teach uh, English language, uh, modern languages, and um, teacher education in uh, at the University of Udine. And I've been following Eurocall for quite a number of years. I didn't follow the um, the conference this year, and I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, Sophie. You want to go next? Okay, I'm Sophie. I'm putting the video. Uh, I'm Sophie, I teach French, as you can hear, uh, and I, I love technology, I, I use it a lot in my teaching, so um, that's why I joined. Good, good to have you here. And then we have Jana, hello Jana. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. So, my name is Jana and I'm from Slovakia and I teach Slovakia's foreign language and uh, I'm a PhD student at the uh, uh, Communist University in Bratislava and in my thesis I focus on um, specific of online teaching of Slovakia's foreign language so I hope this workshop helped me also with my thesis. Okay, good, thank you. And back to Marina. <sighs> Hello, um, I'm Marina Canapera. I work at the University of Padova. Um, I'm currently collaborating with the Language Center um, on testing projects and with the School of Education, um, primary school teachers that are training. It's a five year course and they have to um, <clears throat> attend uh, B1 and B2 level courses of productive skills, which means writing and oral skills. So my work is um, um, <clears throat> geared towards um, helping them to use technologies, educational technologies in the primary school classroom. So that is what I'm focusing on at the moment. Um, I was unfortunately unable to participate in the in the main sessions, but uh, I hope that next year I will make up for it. OK, I'm very, very glad to be here today. Thank you. Very good. OK, and I think we are ready to roll. And let's zoom in on social presence then. And my first question to you is, what is social presence? I'm pretty sure you have heard about it. And I'm going to try now to share, or what is I mean, more than trying to share, I'm going to post a link into the chat. Can you all see the chat? I've just posted a link into the chat. And just tell me whether this works. In you, if you click on it, a Padlet should open, and I will share this on the screen. If it works for all of you, I will share the Padlet. And I would, you click on the plus. There should be a pink plus in the bottom right-hand corner. If you click on that plus, you can then type into a box that opens, and you can put in what you think spontaneously. What is social presence. So un unless I hear otherwise from you, I will assume that you could open the Padlet, that you are starting to type. 
and I will share the Padlet screen so that we can see what's coming up, what your ideas are. And you've typed something, you need to press enter so that it will pop up on our screen. Miriam, I'm sorry. Um, how, however easy is a, a Padlet to, to use, um, it seems as if um, I cannot be, you know, I'm not able to use it. Um, when, you, when you click on the link, does it open up? It does, it does. Okay. I, I cannot, I, for some reason, I don't know whether I clicked um, the, the just, wrong. Let me just say something. And then you see the pink circle in the bottom right corner with the plus sign on it mm -hmm. and then you click on that yeah i'll and try otherwise you... if not you can just type into the chat of the zoom session that's plan b Okay, is everybody typing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Have a look. If, are you ready? Are you are you finished with typing? Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Finished with typing. Okay. So Fifini, Jana, you finished with typing? If you are talking, you have to unmute your mic. Don't forget. That's the classic to forget to unmute your mic while we are talking. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. good. Okay. All right. Have a quick look at what we have. Mm -hmm. All right. Able to, success, to communicate successfully online, engaging viewers to interact, creating dialogue in virtual settings, conversation, discussions, and online platforms feeling in touch, debates in online platforms, conversation on social platforms. Okay, platforms, online environments. Yeah, all this comes into play, absolutely. I stop sharing this and I share the PowerPoint again. Okay, what is social presence? Now, these, what you see here, are some scholarly definitions of social presence. Have a look at those, please. I assume you can see them. If you, if you feel you are not seeing what I'm talking about, please unmute yourself and let me know, because otherwise I keep talking into a vacuum, and that's not good for social presence, okay? 
Just have a look at these definitions for a moment, please. And then, please give us your first reaction. I know this is on a more academic level, it is more scholarly, but I think it is in a way also very concrete. G give us your reaction, please. Is there anything that surprises you here in terms of the definitions? Anything that is new to you or that you you thought hmm, that's got nothing to do with social presence. Why is this here? Maria, any thoughts? Um, the thought is uh, either we want to be practical or we want to be theoretical. And it seems to me that uh, here we are in the more uh, maybe theoretical slide in spite of the fact that it has a strong impact on what then we do and how we perceive people mm -hmm. it is good. a banal thing but uh, this is it i mean uh, even uh, you know community of inquiry uh, which is so famous is not so obvious then when you actually apply and try mm -hmm. to um, and try to use it with uh, students. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we say anything that strikes you here? You. I'm a bit shocked by the third definition because it only regards the learners. What about if it is in a context of uh, education? What about the teachers? Absolutely, everybody, and not just the learners. And that is a very important point because we come to the how to, how to do social presence in in a, in a moment. And obviously, the the instructors, the teachers, the professors so have a, a very important role to play, and we'll find out why in a moment. Marina, any any thoughts? I was just going to say that the first one goes back to 1976. So prior to internet, prior to any online environment. So um, we got to take away the thought that uh, you know, social presence, you, 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 a person goes into a room with a certain energy and the other people could turn around and they feel they have a social presence. That mm -hmm. means that there's there's a connection with someone. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with being over the screen or using technology. So if you're talking about social presence, you know, it's not necessarily to do with just being online. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, it, and, 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 and there's no mention of oh, a yeah, sense of trust membership or empathy mm -hmm. um you in, you're connecting with somebody so mm -hmm. to 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 make that possible online then you need that extra you need some techniques you need some know-how to be exactly. able to mm -hmm. and this is what this workshop is about jana any any thoughts any you don't feel if you don't have any thoughts that's fine or sophie do you have any i any comments um, opposite to, to one, or complementary to Marina's remarks, I, 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 my first reaction was um, regarding the dates of the quotes, uh, because I think that in, especially in the last uh, two years with the pandemic, but um, maybe in the last 10 years, uh, social presence has very uh, much transformed. So. Um, um, yes. I find it uh, a bit, uh, I don't know, maybe we need more recent definitions to complement yes. these ones, mm -hmm. uh, especially for regarding the use of the learners, but also our use and whether young teachers, for example, have come from the social networks culture or not. 
yeah. or older people like me yeah. um, have had to to adapt or just enjoyed adapting mm -hmm. uh, and yeah I, sorry I took my glasses and it took me a long a longer time it's um it's the theory yeah I yeah. guess but the thing is what has not changed and this is why I'm showing you this there is something that has to be done it doesn't just fall into place as it may fall into place based on intuition in a face-to-face -face setting. But I would argue even in a face-to-face -face setting, you have to do something. So it can be cultured. It's about projecting yourself into an environment. And very often you have to do this textually, text-based, or visually as well, depending on what kind of affordances you have on the platforms in the spaces that you are working with, where you meet your learners. But I think the good news is that it is something that can be done, you know, that you, and this is why you can develop strategies. It is, it is not just um, something that will happen by the by. And this is still, this, this, this has been acknowledged actually from early on. And this is why I'm sharing this with you. We'll come to other more modern approaches to social presence as well. You've already mentioned it. It's part of this very famous community of inquiry model by Garrison, Anderson and Archer. And they, you know, they distinguish, if you don't know, it, it's not rocket science. They distinguish between cognitive presence. So this is so the learning, what happens in the head, <laughs> yeah, in a more traditional sense between teaching presence that brings in the dimension that Aloysia felt was missing there. So the, the role of the teacher in a successful online community of inquiry, successful online learning community, and then the social presence, the, the emotional, the affective element. The, 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 the problematic aspect of this model is that when you read, it's not necessarily obvious when you look at it visually, but when you read about it, it is kind of as if social presence was side second, second to the others. Yeah, it is cognitive presence first, then the teacher, then social presence and social presence only as being facilitative. And, and I've been on a mission in my scholarly work and in my uh, training and workshops that I've done in teacher education context to say no, actually, the first First and foremost, we have to get the social presence Definitely. dimension right, and then Definitely. the rest will happen. Okay? And this is also my approach today. Feel free to argue, <laughs> feel free to contradict, but let's see how we get on as we go along. And the teachers are important in terms of what is known as experiential modeling, okay? Because if we have to model this. We have to model this in asynchronous sitting settings. We have to model this in synchronous settings, how it can be done. And model it, but also bring it to the fore. Yeah? Make it a discussion topic. Make it an issue that is um, this, yeah, the, the talked about and that is tried out consciously by your students. So again, don't think if you are modeling it, they will pick up on it. It won't happen. Not only do you have to model it, you also have to bring it to the fore in your classroom. And now here, I would like to share a, a video clip. I think it's from 2014. It's from an, in, uh, a professor at Indiana University, Kurt Bonk, you may have heard of him. Um, he talks about building instructor social presence. It's a 10 minute long video. We might not uh, watch all of it. But what I would like you to do while we watch this, just take a pen and a piece of paper, or if you don't want it, just type into the chat while we are watching it, what you are picking up on. What does he say in terms of strategies and techniques we could use? Okay, let's hope this works. The original sound is on. I now have to share a different screen. This is the classic. Where is it? Where is it gone? Sorry, let me just. Where has it gone? Give me a moment. 
the classic situation. So I want to go out, I want to go out, I want to click on this, try again, and here we are. Yes, success! You have to share the sound. I am. I'm sharing original sound. I, I can't hear it. Just a second. Just a second. Let me stop it. Okay, I tried this earlier. Can Nobody can hear the sound? Nobody? Okay, could anybody hear the sound? Can I ask again, please? No, Tony, you remember earlier, it the original sound is on. I try one more time, otherwise, again, I will copy the link into the chat and you will listen then to, you, to it in your own time. But please make sure your microphone is muted because otherwise we hear the video, you watching the video through your microphone. But let me give it one more try, one more try, please. Okay. Okay, we have to go for plan B then. It's not a problem. I'm prepared for plan B. You can optimize the for video clip. When you when you share, um I've I've done this all the past year, so I'm used to it. I know, you, I know. You, you, you've got to go into the um also into the screen of the YouTube video. I have done that and still it's not working. Ah, okay, all right, okay, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. excuse no, me. No, no, it's not a problem. Plan B is I've copied the link into the chat, all right? So you are all muted, that's good. Click on the link and watch it. And when I want you to stop watching, I'll just wave wildly here on the screen, okay? Go for it. Thank you.
okay. If you hear me, stop. <laughs> you can stop watching the video now. You've got the link. You can always come back to it, obviously. Um, anything that you could say, well, that's an old hat. I'm doing that already anyway. Anything new? Using keywords like um, um, to do with emotions, feeling they can know how uh, they can feel who you are. <laughs> I don't know across the screen. I don't know if that's possible. Mm -hmm. They know that you care. Um, then affective, cognitive, technological, organizational presence. Um, it's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, what he could have done is actually dressed in a different way. <laughs> because and, and I think exactly. That's an interesting one. We could talk a long, a long time yeah. about what he actually is or isn't doing in terms of walking exactly the talk himself. Here, okay. Yes. But the but content he, is good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and anything else, Maria, Sophie, Jana, anything that has struck you, Aloysia? I was just wondering, I think it works if you have small groups, but what do you do if you have about 200 participants in your seminars? I know that at my university economy, all law professors have about 500 students. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to take, you have to create groups, breakout yeah. groups, and you yeah. have to organize maybe um, you have to create pro social presence champ champions within these groups mm -hmm. as well, you know, you have to, to spread the load, actually. Sophie, any, any thoughts, any quick thoughts on what you have watched there? <laughs> no, Sophie's distracted. It's distracted. <laughs> Uh, no, I've not done in the chat what I've heard. Um, yeah. it, it was interesting to put words on things that that I've been doing partially, not mm -hmm. all of them, but some of them. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to uh, to attach um, um, a theory and uh, and to see why why mm -hmm. I've been doing it and the effects on the on the students. Yeah, but. Maria, Marina touched on something very important, which I have started to do very systematically, initially intuitively, actually, during the pandemic. That is systematically putting time aside. And I acknowledge when you have hundreds of learners in your online groups, that's not possible. That's even not virtually possible. You need then to break down groups into smaller groups and you have to have these well-being, social presence champions with whom you work separately almost to prepare them to help you do what you think should happen. And I call it temperature, like checking your temperature, the mm -hmm. emotional check-in to make time systematically to pick up your learners and to pick up yourself and allow the learners to pick you up where you are. Yeah, to, to really make time um, to make yourself also a little bit vulnerable together with your students and just to acknowledge, particularly through the pandemic, we, ha we have been so worried, we've been so concerned on personal levels um, and to share this, to just prepare a common ground. I mean, what a, what a unique, not so good, but what a unique opportunity was this to start from the same point each and every single session because there was one contextual element that we all had in common and that was the pandemic and that is still there you know and just so for once we had one thing in common not a good thing but we had a thing in common a good starting point to put us all emotionally in touch it was an and opportunity it was an opportunity a huge opportunity mm -hmm. and and i think in the future we will have more of these opportunities as a result of the pandemic look we said we had COVID, and the next big health crisis in the world is going to be the mental health mm -hmm. crisis mm -hmm. so it's going to be even more important to check in with everybody to ask how they are doing yeah emotionally mentally before you get started and this, this is this to me is is a big 
big new dimension of social presence. Do you agree, disagree? Have you, have, have, have you done a bit of that or not? Do you, it can be risky, can be dangerous, might end up in situations that you have not been trained for, that you're not familiar with. But hey, I think we grow with the challenges <laughs> that we face and we face, been faced with a lot of challenges as online teachers in particular. Jana, any thoughts? Are you still with us? I hope Jana can still hear us. Sophie, yes, I see your hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree with you and it's something that I've, I've done. I also use the breakout rooms and um, I always opened an extra one uh, so that, and I let uh, students um, are free to choose which breakout rooms they wanted to go to and people they wanted to work with. And there was this extra one when uh, they could talk just to me um, and sometimes they would say, I don't want camera on or if you don't mind, I will not talk today because my, I don't feel well or my dad had cancer, but he has to wait. Da, 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 da. So it was um, a very emotional line, a very emotional breakout rooms, but it, it worked very well. And we always had this uh, first, sometimes 10 minutes uh, talking about how we were and um, if someone had been um, affected with COVID in any way, uh, we would talk about it. And it was, it was a nice bonding time. I think if anything, the pandemic has helped us, hopefully, to become less obsessed with cognitive stuff. I think we're going back to that model, we can clearly see how social presence is so hugely relevant. And because the, the boundaries became so blurred, because we were all working from home and learning from home, teaching from home. So it was not so clear anymore. What is our professional life? What is our private life? What is our student learning life? You know, because all these boundaries blurred. I think it became even more important to make sure we are emotionally on a common wavelength when we expect our learners to be functional, you know. Okay. Jana, I'm not sure if, if you still hear us. I just want to make sure that you are around. Feel free just to type in the chat. And thanks for sharing the, uh, the, uh, the meditation link. There are also the, the popularity of meditation apps during the pandemic has shot up, you know. And a lot of people now can see that in between this back to big online, 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 I need to take time out. I need to walk away from the screen and I need to come down. Okay, let me just share then the PowerPoint again. Here it goes. Um, so it is mostly about sending and also being able to receive through a heightened level of awareness, social presence cues and social presence indicators. Um, so here are a few strategies that I would like you to try out over the next couple of weeks. Some of them you are might you're very likely already uh, using. Um, one or two of them might be new, but again, tell me. So there is explicitly acknowledging a partner's contributions. And we are now focusing here on asynchronous, that is textual exchanges. Uh, some of these are highly relevant for synchronous interactions as well. I really like what you have said. I really like what you have written. I really like your comment on about what, 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 but then also adding why it is that you've liked it, that you appreciate it. Okay. So always trying to go a level deeper, not just say, I like it, thumbs up, <laughs> thumbs down, but also add an explanation what exactly it is that you like and why why you like it now 
One strategy that sounds easy, but is not as easy as you think it might be, is mirroring. Yeah, where you look in textual, in, in chat exchanges, you look for, for words ex and expressions that have been used by your learners, and you uh, use them in your reply. And this is not just as a quote, sometimes we quote in replies, but just looking for words and expressions that might be even a bit unusual or that strike you for a different reason and try to build them into your reply to a post. Now, in the, in the beginning, that will feel a little bit artificial. But again, it is good to be upfront about this and then maybe after a couple of days or after a week or two, to draw your students' attention to that. Hey guys, have you realized that this is actually what I've been doing? And maybe show them one or two example exchanges and then say, look, I encourage you to try and do the same. Try it out when you reply to your peers, to the other students, even to me, your teacher, and let's see what happens. But again, bringing it to the fore and acknowledge that it will feel un unusual, maybe even artificial, and then tell and uh, encouraging students to say, look, let's wait and see, keep going, keep trying. Like with most things in life, the more often we do them, the more natural they start to feel, okay? Then a classic one, I guess you are doing that prompting where you end a contribution to a forum or in an email with an open question or a comment. Uh, what are your thoughts? What do you think? What do you say? I'm interested in finding out what your thoughts are. Looking forward to you engaging, looking forward to hearing your comment, etc. I guess this is one you are already practicing. Then, um, meta commenting, what's co referred to as meta commenting. So when you ask for clarification when, of something that has been posted, or also when you feel you are detecting an, an emotional tone or an, any intent, these things, these things tend to happen in between the lines yeah, and you have to tune yourself into picking them up. And it takes a while because it always also depends on uh, what is becoming characteristic as a contribution to a forum by your learners. So it might take you a little while to pick those in between the line vibes up from your students' contributions. And then you may want to take this out of the forum into another kind of coffee shop type of forum or water cooler type of forum where you then uh, get the students to engage with the how of the interactions, not just the what, but also the how. And if you feel things are derailing a little bit, to again bring that to the fore and say what we've been doing so far, what, has, what seems to have been working well in the way we've been interacting, in the way we've been commenting on contributions, in the way we've been providing feedback to each other. But I think there are some things that we could do better. So always solution focused, you know that, always positive, forward orientated and bringing it to the fore. Did, I think the worst thing we can do is to think, oh, it will go away, the issue will go away. Let's not talk about it because we know by now everything that happens in online only or hybrid context is so much more intensified. If it is good, it's very good. If it is bad, it's very bad. There is not much middle ground. Would, would you agree with this? You want to come in? Have you had experience of that kind? Over the past 18 months in particular? I think with the online situation, if you think of physically the difference between a big lecture hall or a classroom and the online, I think some, some students felt a little bit closer in a way online because um, uh, there, there they were, you know, if, and they'd log in, the, the, the video will be going and, and I would 
quickly start, you know, at the, the beginning of the session, asking them questions, putting them on the spot. Mm-hmm. And, and some of them actually thought, oh, no, I, I've really got to concentrate here. I can't disappear. Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, in a way, it's a, it's, it's a new, it was, um, as I said, a great opportunity also for some of them. Some of the shyer ones, mm-hmm. The more reserved ones I found at the end of this experience were, they said, I, I really learned a lot this year uh, um, because I felt closer in a way. You're right. I mean, but again, you see, for many people, it's been going from the pendulum has swung like this. It went from one end of the extreme to the other. And, what and they felt is, secure also in their environment. And, and some... Mm. Some also really, you could see they would let their guard down because it was technology mediated, because they were in a mediated context and there was a different kind of immediacy. They would all of a sudden feel, particularly when they switched off their cameras, I have experiences where they would all see, be able to say things or type things in the chat that that you would say, oh, where's this coming from, you know? (laughs) But at the same time, it was also very easy for people to get lost in the ether. Yeah. To, dis- to disappear on us, mm-hmm. to disappear on us, and we wouldn't know where are they? Why are they not participating? Yeah. So I mean, to come to the last one, weaving, um, that, which is very time consuming. That is probably the one that is really that to me that is an art. It's a real skill where you look through contributions, almost kind of skimming through them and pick up on common topics, issues, um, and then weaving them all together in a summarizing, bringing it all together, wrap up, comment, contribution at the end of a, a week or a unit or a session or whatever seems appropriate. Okay? So, I mean, all this material will be shared with you afterwards. Don't worry if you can't write everything down. It, it, it is not a problem at all. We will be sharing the recording and we will be sharing the slides and the materials. Sorry, I should have said that earlier in case you were worried about not grasping and being able to note it down or there is no need. Okay, and now um, another thing is, um, Participation, patterns of participation as a result of how motivated we feel. Um, Behaviors, online behaviors in asynchronous uh, forums that have been kind of categorized by uh, Jilly Salmon in her e-tivities. It's it's a publication that is also not a recent one, but it is really a very insightful one and has become very meaningful again to me personally during the pandemic. Um, She has categorized typical student behavior in asynchronous contexts as follows. You might need to come a little bit closer to the screen. (laughs) Um, I've also sent you an email with the version of this document without the photos. You should have that in your email inbox. Can you give me a thumbs up if that's the case or shout rather if it's not the case? I've sent this to you. So um, she categorizes the wolf, visits once a week, lots of activity, then disappears again until next week or even the week after. The elephant, steady, Visit most days for a short period of time. We are talking about your online class in asynchronous interactions. The squirrel, always catching up, completes two weeks in one session, then disappears again for some time. Mm -hmm. The mouse visits once a week, reads and contributes little. The mole, inclined to post disembodied comments in a random way. The rabbit, lives online, prolific message writer, responds very rapidly. The stag, tendency to dominate discussions at certain times. The magpie, steals ideas without acknowledging, from others obviously. (laughs) And the dolphin, intelligent, good communicator and playful online. Now I give you a moment to look at these. Again, now, a couple of minutes. And then to think of maybe one or two animals 
and behaviors that you have experienced or maybe that you have experienced in yourselves <laughs> that are not covered here. Take a moment, take your time. You also have it in your uh, email inbox as a document. Please look at that document because I will stop sharing you, sharing the screen so that I can do something else in preparation for the next step. So unless I hear you shouting, I assume you have this document without photos via email in your inbox. Okay, any thoughts? Jana, are you still with us? I don't know. Hi, Jana, let me try it. I'm, I'm here, but I'm not sure if you... Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, great. My internet connection is really unstable, so no, hopefully it will... Yeah. And this, for example, this is also an important social presence moment, if I can just uh, undo it a little bit. We know that using the camera eats into the bandwidth. So it's perfectly all right then to say, okay, if you have bandwidth issues, leave your camera off. It's important that we know that, that this is the reason because then we don't think someone is not interested or has just walked away, gone to the bathroom, made a cup of coffee while we are trying to engage with them, you know? Right. Maria, any thoughts? About yes. I want let's to just, add the monkey. Let's just, let's just, Marina, let's just Maria go first. Oh, please. sorry, 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 sorry. Just a moment. Maria, go first, That's please. Yeah. And you need to unmute yourself. No? While Maria is trying to unmute yourself, Aloysia, any thoughts? Right, sorry. Can you hear oh, me now? Yeah. Yes, perfect. I've, I've had a few problems in the formatting after the video. Sorry about this. No um, I, I, I am a bit um, thrown by this um, categorization. And it's, it's very interesting that somebody called Salmon uh, put together quite a lot of stereotypes about animals 
Um, so it tells a lot about how we perceive animals. And I would say that it categorizes students in a way that I do not exactly, and, and ourselves, in a way that I do not exactly come to terms with. Because I noticed that my students who, um, my students are uh, all um, university students, so all adults. And um, it, I mean, I cannot really say that they behave in a certain way. What I can say is that for some topics in some situations, with some feedback and within the group and the interaction, they communicate and they behave in certain ways. So what I'm saying here is that uh, maybe like a bit in the video of the instructor, which I found very teacher-centered. Okay, of course, it was a video about the instructor and instructor's presence, so it was obvious that it was teacher-centered. Here, I would say that um, if we categorize behaviors in this way, then we tend to see it in this way. But the situation is so flexible, so fluid, that... Um, I just wonder, you know, whether having labels of this kind helps us. Maria, you are spot on. And I use, I use this exercise normally to get exactly to raise awareness exactly to that effect. It, and I have had nothing but positive outcomes with the learners. Because what, what you just said is, A, it's stereotyping. Not everyone wants to identify with an animal in terms of his or her behavior. Not everybody agrees that this is typical for that animal. Exactly everything is, but this is a discussion it triggers. And by making this kind of behavioral patterns, the discussion topic in the warm up phase, in the initial phase, when you start your online teaching and most of it will happen asynchronously, you can preempt a lot. Because you create a heightened sense of awareness for what might or might not happen within your classroom or within the groups, if you, if you break up students into groups that work together. Okay? Absolutely. I agree with every word you say, and I disagree with chili sand and this approach. It doesn't work like that. It's not like a recipe. But still, using it, to trigger reflection, to get students into a certain frame of mind before they start working online together has proven to be extremely helpful in terms of how they project themselves into environments, how they will send out social present cues and the frame of mind they're in to receive social present cues from others. Does, does that make sense? Okay, good. Anybody, Marina, sorry, I cut you short. You wanted to come in and you were ready to, you were ready to contribute. Go for it. <laughs> sorry. I liked it. <laughs> I, mean, it, it, it I don't agree. I don't agree. I, I don't agree with stereotyping, but a lot of stereotyping takes place online anyway. I yeah. mean, our, 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 I have a teenage daughter. I mean, they're, they're, they're often doing this, but I, I don't agree with that. I uh, but I just wanted to add to animals, if I could. <laughs> um, and Because I, 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 I like a sense of fun. I think mm -hmm. one thing about um, working online, when you can, when you've gotten over the serious business, is sometimes they inject a little bit of fun. And I think um, animal psychology, yeah, I, don't know. Uh, I would add the monkey. Okay. Because sometimes in the breakout rooms, I give them tasks. I, I, I give them tasks with a lovely PDF with the links and things that they have to get on with. And sometimes I come in mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're like monkeys in a, in a cage. Uh, they've yeah. decided to go off on their own tangent in the target language. Mm -hmm. One of them is, and they're kind of having a party in there. So they, they become monkeys maybe in the breakout room because they're comfortable. 
um, uh, and so they're having a, this sense of fun, and that, that's a, a something very positive. And another thing is the cat. Mm -hmm. uh, cat, like my cat, is now sleeping there, but a cat is a very independent creature. Uh, sometimes not always present. They, they may, they may, they may be present, but they don't seem to be. They're lurking in the background, and now and again they come in, and they they kind of stun well, or shock you. Yeah, with and a you comment. can ask the students to, to do the same thing, just for the fun of the exercise. Okay, it is. It is. Of course, don't be tongue in cheek. Don't take it too seriously. But you will course, be amazed in terms of what that triggers about interaction in asynchronous and also in synchronous contexts online. And on the back of this icebreaker warm up activity or whatever you want to call it, I very often ask students in groups, obviously not in huge groups, but in smaller groups when they work on projects or whatever you want them to do, to create their own rules of engagement, kind of the do's and the don'ts. Just a few bullet points, rules of engagement, what we commit to in terms of how we will be working with each other. And then after a while, regularly, I've had them to back check what has been happening in their interactions, synchronously and asynchronously, against the rules of engagement that they themselves have established together. And again, maybe all the way back these animal types and their behavior so that the fun doesn't get lost. Okay, so that you can do it in a light-hearted way. Does that chime with you? Does that, does, do you think that's something that could be helpful for you in the future in your teaching? I also apply it in my virtual exchange because I think here in the list, the uh, expectations are missing. Because if you are, for example, a rabbit, you also expect others to respond immediately to your emails. So when I work in virtual exchange, I always do a sort of netiquette as first task for the groups or the, the pairs working together, because otherwise I think it doesn't function. Yeah. Or some will be disappointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jenny Simon takes it a step further and you should have another message from me in your inbox in the meanwhile. She then also comes up with recommendations as to what the moderator, the, the teacher, the facilitator, recommendations what he or she should be doing. Yeah, you have this animal type of behavior in your classroom. And then there is, there is this kind of, again, recipe type of suggestion. This is what you should do as an e-moderator, as a facilitator to handle that student, okay? And again, what you can do now, I mean, we have only a few minutes left, and what would be interesting to see is if you now, if I ask you now to match these recommendations with the behaviors, let's just do it with one or two because we won't have time to do all of them. Let's say focus on the stack. Look what she says about the stack or what we've learned about what is apparently typical stack behavior. And look among the recommendations. What do you think? Which recommendation recommendation she has come up with to handle, to navigate stack type behavior in online learning and teaching? Sorry, Miriam, but I haven't received a second mail. You haven't received a second mail? No. Others have? I, I have, but um, the document is the same as the first one, if I'm not two, wrong. Two. There are two attachments, and the second, uh, one, right. okay. the second one are now the recommendations. And I definitely send it to you to everybody. Look in your spam folder, Aloysia. It's your university address that you have given when you registered. But I can also share it. If you look at the screen, I've now shared. Can you see it? Yes, no. If you don't shout, I assume you can see the recommendation. Student may need counseling to hold back and let others shine through. Is this the stag? Is this well, the recommendation for the stag? I think so. Spot on, Marina. But how do you I think do, do you think do you think I'm a stag? No. <laughs> Maybe I the fourth one as well. 
I'm a little bit annoying. I do come through sometimes, you know, I have to hold back, give structured roles. But what, yeah. which one do you think? Which one do you think may need boost confidence boosting? And um, needs to be given maybe even a specific role of responsibility within within the group so that they come out of their uh, of their little hole mouse mouse and squirrel depends who do you think i mean the others what do you think who need who needs confidence boosting Okay. Any any other observations? Well, okay. like Marina, the, the, the mouse, maybe the mole, and maybe the magpie. Yeah. Because why does the magpie need to steal IDs? Maybe because she or he doesn't feel confident but with his own? Yeah, could be. But I think, look, there's also foster a spirit of acknowledgement and reinforcement of individual ideas. That's, yeah, I think, I think that for most, you could use one or two of the, exactly. <laughs> of the what you could do for them. Exactly. And also, um, Miriam, I wanted to add to one of, uh, of the remarks that you um, said earlier, because uh, you, you, the, when you, you, how do you say, uh, close your camera when you stop your video. Um, so, for example, for people uh, like me who need to do things to stay concentrated, focused, um, I also invite my student to, to share a little bit, not too much, but, you know, if you need to do something to stay focused, maybe just let me know in a message that I don't feel personally <laughs> uh, upset uh, or I take it personally, uh, but for me, I need to do things, so I've been very quiet now, but I know that for the next session, I will need to be active, otherwise I won't focus. Um, so don't take it personally. I might have my video stop. Yeah, it is, it is absolutely uh, important that they not only do that with you as a teacher and that you create this atmosphere of trust and empathy that we've talked about earlier on in this session. They also, and this is very often what becomes the make or break of group interaction and collaboration, if that's what we are after, they also need to share that with their peers in their groups. Exactly. Yeah. So it's what Maria and uh, the other person said. Uh, I, I agree very much with Maria. I have two dogs and I had difficulties to think of animals because my dogs are so different. So it could have been one of the dogs for some typical behavior and the other dog for another. So it's, I don't think <laughs> taking an animal is, is useful, but it's useful to be aware. And I find um, this idea of activity is very useful. And for the other person, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, uh, who shared about what you do uh, before a group activity. I do like you and I find it very useful to all set and share what um, what or maybe holds us back or what helps us to work so that we understand the reactions online because we, we can't see what is off, off screen and we can't see what is in your head and in your mind. Yeah, the important thing is also with this activity is to really unearth that this kind of one size fits all stereotypical behavior, yeah. recipe type of approach does not really work because even within a session like this one, we can be more than one animal, if you so wish. It can be <laughs> so context dependent, depends on okay. the, mood, the mood we are in. It depends on the task. What are we going, what are we asked to do? What do we want to achieve, etc. There are so many factors that come into play. So please, Remember, I introduced you to this because I think it's a good trigger, it's a good activity to trigger all these exchanges about all these issues that are so incredibly relevant in terms of our social presence online, how we create it and how we curate it. And I hope in that respect, it was helpful. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. 
I think it's a wrap. All the materials will be shared with you. Uh, Super, thank you. The, slides, the worksheets, there is also a final worksheet that brings the, uh, the, the behaviors and the recommendations together. But please don't forget to take it with a pinch of salt. Of salt. Okay. And Marina, I don't think you're a stag. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I have so much to offer. Sometimes I, I, I can't put my words in, in the right way. You know what I mean? But I'm uh, very enthusiastic. You know, that's, that's important. Another yeah, very shows. important thing, last thing, is good lighting. Yeah. I have a, a, you, uh, an influencer lamp, which is, uh, I, have a, I have a friend who sells makeup online. And so I got myself a good lamp because sometimes the lighting is not good. So be very careful about your lighting when you light your face. And it's a comfortable light, so I don't get glare in my eyes, and 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 I feel good. You can see me clearly. So it's very important, also that as well. Mm. How, how do you call the lamp? Uh, it's a, it's a ring lamp. A ring okay. Yeah, yeah, ring lamp. I remember I used during the winter months one for seasonal uh, affective disorder. They're called sad lamps. Of of all acronyms, they're called. Sad, S -A -T, yes. sad lamp, a seasonal affective disorder just to, to throw more vitamin D at me and it, mm. they, they, they look like little iPads now they're very very sexy little gadgets almost mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. and you just plug it in and it, it, it has the same effect as the lamp you are describing yeah and this one you can put the, the mobile phone inside it as well this one's got a stand it's got a microscopic stand and it's really, really flexible and I use it also, I play music and uh, it's really good for making videos. So if you do any tutorials and stuff like that, which I do, then you, you need a good, good lighting. <laughs> practical advice on how to project, this has also got to do on how you project yourself into the exactly. environment. You know? Exactly, exactly. Wow. Everybody, thank you so much for engaging. We have to clean the clear the floor for the next workshop. It was really a great pleasure. Thank you for being here and for taking part. Vitamin thank D. Thank you very much. Vitamin E <laughs> for the sad. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Bye. God bless. Bye. So we have to ask Maria to leave as well, if you can still hear us. Maria? Maria? I don't think she can. Tony, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And I think as a host, we can also ask... Your host still. Are you as well, no? No. Um, what can I do? Uh, you will need to transfer it or to me or to Elodie. I think it's Elodie next. I, but I remove Maria now. I just remove her, okay? Yes, yes. Okay, remove. Okay. Okay, then Elodie admit. She should keep coming in. Yep. You can pause the recording also if you want to for a moment, but we have to remember to start again. Are you sure you want to stop recording? Well, you can keep.